here are my generators. And when I say generators, I have two generators and they're almost identical. And it really wasn't intentional. So I had this Westinghouse for at least 10 years. It was fantastic, it worked really well. I leave it outside, some little squirrels, rodents got into it. Anyway, at some point the electricity started wonking out. Uh, it wasn't delivering 240, it was like 220, it was off. I'm like, uh oh, it's 12 years old, gotta get another generator. I didn't realize at the time that there's a thing called a stator, which is fairly simple to swap out, and that would have fixed it. And the reason I have two of them is because I wind up, I did wind up fixing it. Uh, here it is on the floor with the rest of this junk. You can basically replace a little part like this by the windings and that makes it work. But anyway, that's not my point. My point is I had this thing rigged to work with propane. So we have a pool out there and we have a pool heater and we have a buried 500 gallon propane tank. Now some areas you might have Natural gas, that's really the best way to run these things because one, it doesn't gum up the carburetor and two, I can run on 500 gallons, which is really 400 for about 10 days straight, 24 seven, uh, without needing another delivery. So if we lose power for more than 10 days, you know, we got a problem. But anyway, it's great. You just leave it running. It runs all through the night. It keeps, I got a bunch of refrigerators. It's, it can run the whole house. All right. So the way I had this thing, because we have propane in our, there's the regulator right there, and it runs to the stove in my house. So somebody had teed off the original underground propane tank, ran half of it to uh, our pool, and ran a feed over here for our, we have a, a, a cooktop range that runs on, on the propane. So what I did, was I teed into that inside, came back out here, put on a quick disconnect and a shut off. And if you're not comfortable with this, obviously you could have somebody do it. And I ran, I bought a rubber three quarter inch tubing and I wanted to use this thing with propane. I did some research as a company called US Corporations. They have a kit called a motor snorkel kit. What is it? It's a regulator that you attach the tube, the, uh, the, the hose to. Well, it looks like this. It's a regulator you attach this to. It comes with a, a T right here and the tube. And the tube actually went into a gasket. Uh, basically, what th there was a gasket that the propane passed through. So you'd stick it by your carburetor in between, just past the carburetor. And that's what I did on this one. You, I put it right past the carburetor and the propane line went in there, worked great. Okay, anyway, that's not the, again, that's not the point of this story. When I bought this one, this, I said, let me get one that's made to work with propane. So I got a dual fuel. This is a WGen 9500DF, now obviously, I'm not buying the most uh, top of the line generators, but if this one worked for 10 years and never failed me and it was great, I figured same company, it's gonna be, it's a little bit bigger also. All right, this one has, they both had electric start, but things have come a long way, or battery start. This one's got a button like your car has. So, first thing, I, so I bought another, another hose, which is right over here. And when I hooked it up, the first thing I noticed is the regulator's plastic. It's like a little small, it's half the size of the other one, it's plastic. The inlet, this is three quarters. I bought the same pipe as before. I had to reduce it down to a half an inch because the inlet over here is half an inch. On this one, again, not that it matters, but this one has three quarter inch inlet. So three quarter, I believe, Yeah, it's three quarter to three quarter. So this is a much bigger inlet, okay? Uh, again, not that it matters. Didn't matter to me. I'm like, yeah, that stinks. Anyway, I went to start it up 
This thing started with a propane on the first pull or the first press of the button every time. This one, and again, here's where, again, I apologize for this story. If it's boring you, you can click off, but this thing is very hard to start with propane. So the way you do it is you click this on, you push the button, and it tries to start. And after five attempts, it turns itself off. Well, this, for the first two years I had it, would routinely take about six attempts to start up. And I know the reason why. There is no um, primer or priming button on this. There's a primer on the other one. So what happens is, this is low pressure propane. In order for it to go into the engine, it needs a vacuum. So there's pretty much air in here right now. So it takes a while <laughs> For, to, to pull the propane in in order to run it. And I just, I was always worried what happens if cold outside, 30 degrees, either the battery dies, I have a second battery hooked up to a, to a solar charger up there. What happens if the battery dies? What if it doesn't start? I don't like it's taking six times to start. So the other day I had a brainstorm. Like what if I take the, take the regulator off of this one and I use that instead of this. Well, I wasn't gonna break this and take it off. So I took this apart. I took that motor snorkel part out, threw it in the garbage. I had a, an old barbecue grill regulator. I took the hose, so I took the motor snorkel off. I disconnected the tube over here. I guess this is, what, maybe three inch, three eighths of an inch or half an inch. Whatever this hose is over here, this was exactly the same size as was on the motor, motor snorkel kit. This one right here came from the barbecue grill regulator. So all I did was I disconnected where it was going into the regulator here, pulled it off. I, I disconnected the clamp, pulled it off, and I attached this. So now the propane's going in into this right here, into this regulator. Then it's coming out this way, up and around, and into the engine the same way an o the, it, the same way it's OEM set up to. Again, in other words, the only difference is I just swapped regulators. I by, bypassing this regulator and using this one. Now on the back of this, there is a primer. Watch. I'm gonna turn this on. And I'm gonna show you. Oops. If you listen carefully, you can hear this. I can't put this camera behind it. Maybe I can, listen. You hear it? So now I just gave it three primes. That should be enough to get this started on one try, okay? So let's give it a shot here. It's on, I'm gonna push the button, we'll see if it starts up. It. So it started up. I'm gonna let it run. I'm gonna let this run. I'll show you how you turn these things off. I mean, obviously, if you're watching this, you probably have propane. You don't. You don't click it off that way. Turn it off like that. You cut the source of propane. Okay. I wish I thought I had. I wish I had thought of this video or making this before, before I actually swapped them around because that would have been good to show you. Uh, that's it, if you have a generator that runs on natural gas or propane, if yours starts up on one or two pulls or one or two attempts, great. But like I said, mine was taking a, a lot to start up, a, at least six times. The only time it wouldn't take six times, if I ran it like this, and then I went to start it again, it would start right up, because obviously this propane is right, is all the way up to the engine at this point. All right, see the motor snorkel kit had, has this, this piece right here. This regulates how much propane is going in to the generator, this T piece. 
this is a locking nut. If I unlock this, I turn that in, you get a little less propane. Unscrew it, you get a little more propane. And it's, it was very finicky to set up initially. It came set up, but then it loosened up and I had to play around with it and I got it perfect and I, I tightened it back down. It's not gonna move now. So that's it. Again, the company's called US Corporations. You can buy a regulator and the, a, like a barbecue grill regulator to, to hook it up for like five bucks. The only other thing that I needed was, and I had it from that motor snorkel kit. There's a little uh, barb to barb connector in here. If you want to call this a half and this three, uh, three eighths, half to three eighths barb connector. The three eighths goes in here, half goes in there. I had the clamp from over here. These I used zip ties, thick zip ties, tightly with a zip tie gun. And that's it. Thanks for watching. Any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section. Okay? But to me, that's the way to go. And I actually got to use this setup because we lost power yesterday for about two hours. And I had a chance to run this motor snorkel, uh, well, the regulator from the motor snorkel kit. It ran for two hours, no problem. It started right up. But I've been watching a bunch of videos and I just wanna mention something. This whole thing might not apply to you if you use a regular little propane tank. What I think, you see this three quarter inch? I got a three quarter inch by 12 foot hose hooking up the generator to the propane tank. And the starting issue, I believe, only applies because there's a lot of air trapped in a big hose like this compared to a little small. If you have a regulator and a small 30 pound propane tank, you probably have a tube like this that's like two or three feet long with not that much air in it. So maybe it starts up on the first or second or even third attempt. I watched somebody else, it started up really fast. I'm like, that's weird. This thing has never started up fast. And I've started it for, like I said, a good year's worth of use. It always takes a good six tries. And I think the reason is the, the size, the size of the connection. It's got a lot of air that's got to push out before it gets to the propane. So anyway, this is probably a good thing to do if you're running off of a house that has either propane or if you have natural gas and you have 12, 14, 15 feet of use uh, of tubing before the generator, all right? One more That's thing if you're still watching. This setup is really good. I took an old car battery that wasn't completely dead when I bought a new battery for my car, uh, charged it back up, bought this solar charge controller. So it's running from the solar panel. It's a small panel. It's maybe 50 or 60 watts down to here and the batteries are wired together. So I have this battery and the one that came with, with it. That's it. I actually did that for this one as well. So even though this generator is out of commission and broken, this is still being charged. So, you know, it's, it's one thing when it's 80 degrees like today. It's another thing when it's four degrees out in the middle of the winter, you wanna make sure the batteries work I'll be able to start this because it's very hard to start propane. It takes a lot of, a lot of strength to start a propane generator. That's why most of them are uh, battery start, electric start. Uh, if you're looking to buy one, make sure you get one that has auxiliary, like a pull cord, just in case. Because if you have one that's only battery, and it doesn't and, and doesn't work, or you know, or the battery's dead, you have no way of starting it. All right. Thanks for watching.